he's had. I think they've disputed him. But again, uh, you know, you can dispute them all you want, but they happen in the game, right? Right. And and and, and so I think this is maybe one way uh, to uh, maybe you know m- make sure that, that that they try to put a stop on it to have somebody else out there because it sounds like uh, Connor Williams has had a a, a bullseye on him uh, from the officials. If it is the case that. Tyron Smith is back and he's relatively healthy and Connor McGovern. I know these are ifs is an upgrade or at least as good without the penalties than Connor Williams was. How good is this offensive line then? Well, the Cowboys have never, I don't think been in a situation like this where they could find somebody uh, to step in and be the swing tackle and have a guard uh, yeah. that you don't mind using. Now, as for Tyron Smith, uh, I think Mike uh, McCarthy was pretty adamant in pointing out that he needs to practice all three days before they put him out there. So he's gone twice limited. Uh, today's the mock game, which really doesn't count, right? It's the walkthrough. Right. And then tomorrow will determine if indeed, uh, you know, Tyron Smith plays. And, you know, I think as he told the guys this morning and as he told us, you know, uh, you know, Tyron says, yeah, I got through the work yesterday just fine. Uh, but they got to see it again Saturday. And and that's when they'll make the determination uh, if he got through all three days that, okay, it's good for him to start. So the the decisions on those guys is are independent of each other. Okay. It's not like, okay, Tyron's starting because they're going to play – Connor McGovern at left guard. Otherwise, we wouldn't put him out there, right, to play next to Terrence Steele. That is actually what I thought was potentially happening at first. But, yeah, I I appreciate the clarification. Let me just ask you one more question about Tyron then. Being out there for that third day, that's just a byproduct of, like, making sure your body can handle it as opposed to, well, you need to go out there to know what to do, right? Oh, I don't think it's any got anything to do about know what to do. Right. You, know, you could put him out there uh, after he slept all week, and he'll be better at left tackle <laughs> than anybody else you could put out yeah, there. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and they just got to make sure that the work that he's done on Wednesday and Thursday didn't irritate the injury. You know, because sometimes you can go out there and work, and then you wake up the next morning, and it's like, oh, this doesn't feel very good, right? Uh, and so... Uh, that's what you have to be careful of, and 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 in the meantime, and, and and you know, and here's the here's the juggling act you have to do. You can't just assume uh, because he practices on a limited basis that he's ready to go. So you also got to give Terrence Steele some snaps, right? Yeah. You got to make sure that oh, we got the Saturday and nah, he's not ready, and then Terrence Steele didn't have any snaps during the week. So you would have to have both guys ready to go. Uh, and and I don't think Mike was lying when he said, you know, we're gonna we're gonna have both guys ready, but you also have to have Connor Williams ready because now he's the backup swing tackle or guard, uh, is that matter? Now I don't know if they're gonna put him at fullback, right, uh, or do any you know third uh, tight end type blocking, uh, but you know as somebody somebody said when we were in there, they go, yeah, who who shuttles in uh, guards? And I was like, Tom Landry did. You know he did that, right? Yeah. At one point, the he sent the plays in with the guard. Oh, huh. yeah. I actually don't know if I did. Know I that. did know that because I've talked with Mickey a lot in my life. So he, I uh, actually remember I, that. and I don't know how long that lasted, but there was one year he he shuttled the guards back and forth with the play call. <laughs> Man, you better trust those guards because the guards like to think about food more than they Plus do. Plus they had about... two guys that were pretty good to be able to do that, right? Yep, yep. It's like so much for that continuity, right? <laughs> so if you, if you anyway. Have four guards, Kevin, then you have So no now, guards. now, you know, now, uh, and I would think from Mike's standpoint, unfortunately, Kansas City knows what's going on, right? And guess where you, you think they're going to put Chris Jones? Yeah, up on that oh, side. Yeah, Connor oh, McGovern, <laughs> get ready, big boy. Mm. Boy, uh, be ready. They've already have moved him inside. 
Uh, and, and now they know. And it's like, you think they're going to waste their time putting them on Zach Martin? No. no. Hell no. You well, shouldn't even uh, line up anybody against Zach Martin. But you just knew he was yeah. going to be there yeah. anyway, right? Just he was going to be up. on that side yeah. no matter what guard you play. Well, that's why. And so now you put Connor Williams in the backfield and you just let them double team Chris Jones as two offensive linemen. You got this taken care of. I support of. that. I and just run them right over. <laughs> yeah, right? Yes. exactly. Uh, Mickey, will, will Micah Parsons break DeMarcus Ware's rookie franchise? record of eight sacks in this game in this game wow <laughs> not eight sacks in this game but oh, he, no i know he get the two, two more to tie. Tie. Okay. gotcha tie, right I, I was about to say holy cow <laughs> i'm gonna say yes Whoa. oh That's good. you See, know they've got they've got rookies on their offensive line yeah right three of them yeah. now i don't know if they're all healthy but you know three of them they're rookies so um you know he uh, they better be ready but again you know, what do they think? How did they prepare? Do they think he's playing linebacker or do they think he's rushing the quarterback? Uh, and um, so uh, that'll be interesting. And, you know, and, and if he indeed is rushing more than playing linebacker, then, you know, Kansas City's got to adjust. You know, they may have to put somebody else over there. That Let's take, you know, one less guy going out in the formation uh, in the in the pass patterns. Or at least delays him getting out, right? Because they're going to chip him. Mm -hmm. um, and and then the other thing, if they see him out there, they're going to run at him and right. see if he can right. hold up against the run. So I think you have to be somewhat selective on uh, how you play him out there. Um, you know, when it comes to the running game too. I Is Jerry Jones invested uh, in stock in Dorrance Armstrong because? <laughs> This dude, for three years now, Jerry Jones loves Dorrance Armstrong. And now I think this season is the first year we're really getting the benefit of it. Well, it, it, finally. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, he it took him a while after he missed, I think he missed like four games. And this past one was his third back from the injury. And I think he kind of settled in and you saw a little bit more of what he's capable of doing. Uh, and they sure need him to step up in this game. Yeah, uh, they need to get pressure on Mahomes, but even more so. And and just listening to what Mike McCarthy talks about with Mahomes, one of the things Mahomes likes to do is he takes an extra deep drop, and and and, it's, and it doesn't happen by happenstance. Uh, right. He does it on purpose because if he's deeper. Uh, then he has the ability to step up in the pocket and still throw the ball as long as you can block the guys up front. So you need to get a push uh, up uh, up the middle uh, to keep him from doing that. But if he takes that deep drop, then he can see where the blocking is in the middle, and he likes to step up into the A and B gap uh, and then throw as he's stepping up on the run. Um, so again... Um, you got to be careful how you rush him and don't allow him to start creating like that. And, you know, I, I thought that was one of the big things for this week uh, was this deal about, you know, the, the play should last no longer than 2.3 seconds. And if it lasts longer than that, then your secondary is in trouble because there's only so long you can cover, right? You're not going to run with Tyreek Hill for three seconds sure. or four seconds, no doubt, right? No or it's going to uh, end poorly. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's what they want, and that's how uh, Mahomes plays. Uh, so, And, you know, his arm is so strong. The two things that you notice is, one, he can throw back against the grain, which is like the number one rule that a quarterback should never do. And the other one, he, he he can throw on the run. He doesn't have to set his feet to, to you know, sling it 40 yards or 50 yards. Uh, so, yeah, this will this will be a great one. I think we're in for a treat on Sunday afternoon. All right, but let's find out how great you really think it's going to be, Mickey. It's prediction time. You know, uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to over uh, buy their performance against the Raiders. Okay. Um, you know, and and you can look at the Tennessee game and say, okay, that was their clunker they threw in getting beat 27 to 3. But the Giants the, the Giants gave them all they could handle in, in you know, and they won yeah. 20 to 17. Um, you know, the Packers the same thing, 13-7. Um, so there, there was three games in a row there where offensively they struggled, and I don't think it was about turnovers. The turnovers were occurring uh, early in the season. So I, I just think, look, if you had a coin, uh, 
on the one side you would have in Cowboys offense we trust. Mm. And so this comes down to can this defense just play well enough that you don't have to score 40 points to win. So I'm going to look at it, and I got uh, Cowboys 34, Kansas City 27. Ooh, love it. I yeah. hope that that is the exact and score. I, and I think I, I, I just think this team, if they don't beat themselves, uh, is good enough to go up there uh, and win a game. Um and and so we'll I you know obviously we'll find out right right I know uh, you know but look you know if you look at the scores Buffalo you know at, at Buffalo scored thirty eight points yeah you know so um, Cleveland I know it was the opener and this was at Arrowhead had twenty nine right um, the Chargers you know you know they they had thirty. So, you know, I just think this offense is good enough. And with everybody, as as long as, you know, and I I would like to see Tyron Smith out there. That that certainly helps. Uh, And and if that's the case, then I think this offense can hum along, uh, even uh, though it's a tough place to play with all that noise. Man, Uh, great stuff. As always, Mickey, looking forward to hearing you uh, this weekend and then looking forward to catching up with you again on Monday, sir. I'll be here Monday. See you guys. There you go. Mickey Spagnola from DallasCowboys.com. Just to go along with some of the offensive stuff that he was talking about, Dallas only has 37 negative plays on offense this year. That's the fewest. That's the fewest in the league. That is very, very good. Okay. Which is probably it makes me feel better now that we know that. Yes, that is good. Thank you for asking. That's an important follow up yes. question. Is they have the best offense across the board. Most yards in the NFL per game. Cowboys four hundred and thirty four. Most points in the NFL per game. Cowboys thirty one point six. So any way you slice it, from lack of negative plays to most yards to most points, the Cowboys have the undeniable best offense in football. I I agree with you on that because we've Good, been looking at all the numbers. Good, because I said undeniable. Yeah. Uh, I gotcha. The, I am kind of curious, Mike, you played in cold weather baseball. And oh yeah, this is going to be. And I want to. <laughs> I do want to talk Buffalo about Buffalo and Ottawa. All right, appreciate everybody for jumping in. That's one hundred five point three. The fan uh, breaking news: Jerry Jones couldn't help himself. He had to spill all of the tea, and he said that hey, pretty much, pretty much, Connor McGovern earned that spot at left guard, so he will be the uh, starting left guard heading into the Kansas City Chiefs week. Now this thing right here, Cowboy Nation. It's 50-50 with me, you know. Uh, a lot of people say, hey, don't don't mess up with it. You know, we already doing good. But, hey, this is the team that evaluates everything. Not some things, but they evaluate everything. And what Boss Cowboy and the OC been banging on the table when we've been doing the final word is getting Connor Williams up out of there. And – Trust me, I'm not sitting here saying that those boys are 1,000% right, but damn it, they 1,000% right today. (laughs) Based upon or juxtaposed to what we are hearing of what the Cowboys just lamented with Jerry Wayne Jones, I don't think that there's anybody. They got more money than Jerry Jones right now, right? That, 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 That he's right on the money when it's come down to this right here. And that's just what it is, Cowboy Nation. Connor McGovern been balling with the limited resources that he had out there. Now, I do know of what Mickey Spags just said, that sometimes it probably would be better for them to set him out because he already got a mark on his back. They are looking for certain things from number 52 that they saying that, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. He holds a lot, you know. So some of that, as it relates to those holding penalties, 13, leading the league in the NFL, the National Football League with penalties, some of that is on him. Yeah, yeah, some of that is on on him. But majority of this stuff, man, whew, it is what it is, you know. And, And that's moving all of the emotions to the side. That's moving all of the feelings. You know, uh, when y'all come over here, I tell y'all just how it is. Uh, What old boy said on baby boy. 
What old boy says on baby boy, girl, I lie to you because I care about your feelings. I'm not sitting here trying to care about y'all feelings. Y'all going to get it to raw over here, you know. And on top of that, I, I've seen people come left and right and say, well, law, the reason why, the real reason why Connor Williams got all of those penalties because he's trying to help out. Tyler Biotish. I know bull sugar when I see it. 45 to 17 Dallas. They are going to ruin the ball down Casey throat. Oh my goodness. Andy. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's going to be good. Dang. <laughs> but, but back to this. Appreciate you for the donation to help elevate everything. I know bull sugar when I see it. Why law? Why law? Why you know this bull sugar? Because the center is in the middle of the field. And if that's the case in a scenario, why, oh, why, Zach Martin don't have a bevy of holding calls? Stop making excuses for players, Cowboy Nation. Stop falling in love with players. Look at the tape. Take emotions out of it. Evaluate it from what you can see. And let's repeat this thing, you know, uh, you know, it, that's just the craziest part of it all. But they say, but, but low, hey, low, the reason why Connor got all of those holding calls is because of Tyler. And Zach Martin sitting over there with one holding call, with one penalty. <laughs> it don't make sense, you know. <laughs> you can't, you can't continue. Can't continue to make these excuses. Uh Let's listen to, uh, let me see if I can play it, play it right here. Join us here at 105 through the fan. When you see, like, an early season, like like Mahomes had, like the start that he had where he's turning the ball over at a much higher rate than he ever has before, uh, do you look at it like, uh, man, he says he's in a slump, he's having a bad stretch, or have teams really done something different to him? Well, I think you just, you look at you, you look at the turnovers. I mean, we, we, we that's something we have on every player. Every right. quarterback, we call them profile tapes, you know, and we have our fundamental tapes. So uh, we, we've shown every, you know, takeaway against their offense of the season. Actually, in, that's something we do in the Thursday team meetings for, you know, whatever fundamental we really want to put extra attention on that week. So, I mean, you you pay attention to those things, but, uh, you know, you got to look at it too. You know, we're, you know, just you got to take interceptions for what they are. You, are they tip passes? Are they, you know, Good defense, or is it decision? You know, is it what, what? What are the you know characteristics involved in the, in those situations? And you know, I, I just think they're they're aggressive offense by nature, and you know, the ball didn't, didn't bounce their way early. You know, but just look at the last couple of games; they're doing a really good job taking care of the ball. This is uh, Mike McCarthy uh, presser uh, to one hundred five point three to fan. Shout out to one hundred five point three to fan under the audacity to uh, listen to one hundred five point three to fan. Be sure to click this uh, link right here. And uh, bold prediction, 38-0, to zero, Dallas. Defense overwhelms the KC. Man, if that happened, bro, I got <laughs> – oh, my gosh, man. Bold prediction, 38-0, to zero, Dallas. Defense overwhelms KC. Dog, if, if that happened, Alex, man, uh, I'm going to the pro shop just for you. You know, I'm going – I'm making a whole video to, saying thank you for tuning in to the Law Nation pro shop video. And we're going to get that – jersey of your choice you know coach there's been a lot of talk about uh too deep patience defensively this year against these explosive offenses just sit back and force them to go on 10 11 play drives test the patience of these offenses and these quarterbacks have you been seeing a lot more of that this year throughout the league and and have teams really been doing that to kansas city it really depends on who you are um you know i i think it's and how you're built offensively, uh, because you know there's there's explosive offenses that that can't really threaten the middle of the field, and you know right. don't really dictate as much um, two shell defense. And, and and when you have the ability to do that in the passing game, it obviously really helps your run game. And I think that's why it's so important for us uh, to continue the way we're playing. Uh, you know, we feel like we can run the football each and every week, regardless of who we're playing. And, we feel the same way about the passing game. So shout out to you, Jay um, Buck. Then that that's that's what's really important. But yes, two shell defense is something as a play caller. Uh, I know 
you know, in, in my time, you, you you hope for because when when they're playing the two shell, it, it's you know, it's it puts you in a different rhythm, and and, and patience is a good thing because you you know you when you can control the line of scrimmage and they're in two shell defense, you have a really really great opportunity to control the game. So you actually you're okay with it versus having that itch as an offensive guy to hey let's 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 throw the bomb let 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 let's let's unleash here let's stop with these little six and seven yard gains you're you're fine with that? No, oh, absolutely because I, I think in every game you have big play opportunities that, that present themselves and it's, it's it's frankly it's one of the statistics that that's given to me at halftime because because I, I, I want to know how many big play opportunities both sides of the ball. Have had and, and what the what the conversion rate of is is because I think it tells you a lot about the flow of the game and you know something we've always coached offensively and it's something that you, you remind you know your quarterbacks uh, you know near the end of the week is don't chase the big plays you know especially with our Infects. our offensive perimeter you know it's you know a big play can come off of a slant you know we don't have to throw the ball forty yards in the in the air to 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 gain forty yards so and that's where you know the offense of building it around the quarterback and just when you have an excellent quarterback in Dak, and you know he's he's doing a great job with the decision making, just be patient, and and those plays are come. But um, the, uh, yeah, I, I have no problem if they want to play a two shell defense because you know the the other fifty percent of our offense, our run game, they have to deal with. I, I'm fascinated by the kind of the the choice that teams have to make, where you have to decide you know who you're going to kind of take away on the other team. But yeah. You, what do, you, what do you think is more difficult to game plan for, that elite wide receiver like Tyreek or the elite tight end that might be on a slower linebacker or safety? The best offenses I've, I've been a part of, the, the, the tight end is the difference maker because he can command the middle of the field. And, and, I, and that's exactly what you see with Kelsey. I mean, he's, you know, he can run a, you know, an eight-yard option route and, you know, turn it into a 17-yard gain, and he does it consistently. His yards after the catch – is is outstanding. Uh, it's definitely a focal point for us, you know. So we, we. Hey, let's let's listen to this one right quick. I think this is the audio the, right the, here. The hail call, which is when they're flying high and you call them in, and that goes whack 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 whack, <laughs> and then you have the feed call. The hail call, which is when they're. Jerry Jones, crazy as all get out, man. <laughs> Uh, Mike McCarthy really tried to. This is from Skywalker. Shout out to him. Be sure to check out Skywalker. Mike McCarthy really tried to keep things close to the vest, and Jerry be like, "Nah, not so fast, my friend." <laughs> oh yeah, I mean Jerry, Jerry spilling all the tea, man. Jerry, look, Jerry, Jerry like this, man. I might not see tomorrow. I may not be here to watch the game. So I'm going to let you guys know right now, you know, what's going on with the Cowboys organization. He couldn't hold none of that stuff. <laughs> Jerry Jones is one of those people, man, and, I, and we love him, right? We love him. But Jerry Jones is one of those who say, hey, man, don't tell nobody. Man, man, please don't tell nobody. But, you know, I got this situation that's going on with Ashaniqua, and I can't let Kamika know, you know, but – this is the thing, Jerry. Ashaniqua is such and such. You know what I'm saying? And then three days later, Kamika will be like, I heard what Jerry said. Nah, it won't even be three days. It'll be that same day. I'm like, God dog, Jerry, I thought I posted. You supposed to be my boy. You supposed to be my homie. <laughs> Look, what benefit would we have by giving this information out? And I'm not, I'm definitely not throwing any salt or shade at uh, Jerry for this because this could be a scramble moment. <laughs> this could be some good, this could be, it could be some good stuff though. If you think about it collectively, <laughs> if you think about it, this could be good, good in the, in the sense, whereas now all of a sudden they saying, dang, we got to prepare for Connor McGovern now, you know, and, and they, they changed horses in the middle of the race. Versus just them only thinking about Connor Williams. And we know that they don't think about Connor Williams. So maybe in their walkthroughs and their practice, all of a sudden now they're going to be looking at this thing and saying, you know what, we got to do extra installments on Connor McGovern juxtaposed of thinking about Tyrant Smith. I mean, Tyrant Steele. Uh, with Terrence Steele or Tyron Smith or even uh, Lyle Collins at this matter, you know. So that could work out into our favor, though, Cowboy Nation.
if we look at it from that point of view. We got to really squeeze the coverage on him uh, early and often. So, uh, you know, the tight end or, or the big receiver, to, to the ability to, to attack the middle of the field creates the, you know, more one-on-one situations outside and out. You know, as far as Hill is concerned, I mean, they, they do a great job moving him around and you know, cre- creating as many opportunities as possible to get him the ball. So, you know, that, that's that's the other factor you got to deal with. But if I was throwing up the the passing game, you know, it, an elite tight end can, can really make a di- huge, huge difference in your passing game. Mike McCarthy here on Sean and RJ, 105.3 The Fan. You're right, uh, Coach, we focus on offensive line and everything on this football team more <laughs> than a lot of other cities. Uh, we, we were hearing this last <laughs> night. Can you confirm that you guys are making a switch at left guard with Connor McGovern in for Connor Williams? And- Reporting live from 105.3 The Fan, the real reason why the Cowboys really like to keep things close and safe to the vest, but we'll find out soon what Mike McCarthy will say about this news. Breaking news at 11.30. And if so, why? Well, I'll just say this. I mean, I'm, you know, lineup changes aren't, aren't, you know, part of these conversations on Friday. I mean, I'll say this. Both corners will play in the game. That, 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 that's for sure. Um, you know, that's that's our plan, and so that's where we'll leave that. Our- <laughs> that's, all, that's all Mike McCarthy wanted to leak out. Both Con- Connors will play in the game. <laughs> but the, the problem is, though, the problem is, is, is this right here. We spilled the tea. Uh, Clark Kent says, not Superman, but you're not Superman yet, but you're Clark. Yeah, shout out to you, Clark. Uh, Connor Williams is our new fullback. And if you look at Connor Williams' size, if, if he can scoot and pull and just get in the way, just don't hold, then that probably would not be a bad idea, by the way. If he can scoot around, he's quick, he got good feet. And, and if he can go and lean forward, you know, just a little bit, get in the way, then that could be a good situation for them. Are you uh, feeling good about Tyron's return? I'll tell you what, uh, talking with Tyron after practice yesterday, uh, he had a good day's work. You know, this this will be, you know, an important day for him. And, and if, if he if he goes full practice tomorrow, then he'll definitely have, you know, a chance to play. But we just got to see how he comes out of the out of the rehab part of it. The goal, the goal was for him to practice all three days. Uh, before you know, we, we cut him loose on Sunday, so um, I, I haven't seen him yet this morning, so I can't really give you an update. Coach, we know what McGovern looks like at fullback. Can you just kind of give us a reset of his skill set at guard uh, playing up front? Um, I, I think the best thing about Connor is, is his versatility. Um, you know, he can. You know, I, I think it's if you look, you go back to last year, um, we had him as the highest rated you know lineman. Um, you know, at times, and we had you know with the injuries that we. Curve, but he, I thought he played extremely, extremely well. He had a really good camp. Um, but, you know, we've, you know, we've moved him around. He's played a bunch of different positions, and and I think that's a real credit to him because uh, particularly in the last couple of weeks, he's, you know, he's graded out very high for us. So uh, he gives us, he gives you a great flexibility, and you know, he's he's a really good player both in the run and protection. Mm. Coach Connor Williams has gotten uh, you know penalized quite a bit, most in the league this year, and and when. Uh, I'm old enough to remember when Bill Parcells was here, he would say he doesn't coach penalties. Like, how do you approach the players when they get penalized and, you know, working on techniques and stuff? Or do you, is that not something that you coach either? Oh, no, I coach them. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know what coach meant by that statement, but um, Jerry not yeah, it's definitely. I mean, is penalties are part of it. And I, and I think that, face. Say that again, Jay Versi. Appreciate you, man. Come on, AI. Get it right. <laughs> but neither you know them. The challenge that we're under now, it's 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 bigger than ever. Um, you know, the, the, the officiating is is something that factors, you know, each and every Sunday and so you definitely have to be aware of it. So in and, and the awareness really comes into the the heightened uh, emphasis on your on your fundamentals. Uh, we've we've always broken down the penalties in, in three areas. You know, you have pre snap penalties and then you have discipline penalties and combative penalties and you know the pre 
Ooh, I like it. Pre-snap penalty. That's false start. That's before the, even the whistle goes or what have you, or you not uh, getting off the field, too many men on the field, too many people in the huddle. I like that. And then, oh, my goodness, discipline. You know, you, you can't over, you can't be over aggressive, you know. And all of those things plays a major role. And I do like the fact that when Coach broke down all of that stuff before, he lamented this right here, Cowboy Nation that they grade every single play, plus or minus. They, 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 that's just how it's been even in middle school, high school, and any game that you ever played in as it relates to football, plus or minus. And what they do over here in Cowboys land, hear me out, Cowboy Nation, is that they don't hold any favors now. But back in the past, baby, baby, it, it, it will be, okay, what round you was drafted? Oh, you're going to continue to play. It's no elevation. There's no Wiley Pip. It's, well, you don't want to be Wiley Pip, but you guys get what I'm saying. There's no real true and true competition. It's just that, hey, what who's ever we drafted first, that's who's going to be out there playing. It's favoritisms, cronyism, you know, all of those things. <laughs> Nepotism. It's not penalties are unacceptable. You know, it, it just, you know, as far as the false starts, offsides, you know, those, those are things you have to eliminate from your game. And, you know, that's why we preach and spend as much time as we do on, you know, breaking down the plays in the three areas. I mean, the pre-snap is a, is an important part of, of every play. I mean, there's there's <laughs> a lot that can be accomplished before the snap of the ball. Great, so I see you. The fact that you're the pre-snap penalties. So we obviously coach those differently, but then you have the post-snap penalties, and and we break those down into two er- two areas. You know, one once you have combative penalties, and, you know, frankly, if your team doesn't have – a few combative penalties, then, you, then you're probably not playing hard enough. So uh, we, our combative penalties have been up this year compared to last year. Um, you know, some of them were debatable whether you felt they were a good call or not. Uh, but the fact is, that we're on the edge, and um, you know, our play style is is definitely different this year than it was last year. And this is all part of the emphasis. And I think our players are doing a great job of trying to be a better job. You know, playing as as aggressive as well. and. You know, and, and staying within the rules, and then you, you know, then you have the undisciplined penalties um, that that you just you have to get, you know, as far as hand placement and you know some of the common fundamental errors that you continue to coach. So, yes, I've, I'm always coaching the uh, pre-snap and the and the undisciplined penalties because you you got to get them out of your game the best you can, and you kind of live with the combative penalties. Ooh, and that was the end of that interview with uh, Mike McCarthy. Hey. If you are a big fan of Iron Mike, and and if you are a believer of Mike McCarthy, let me see Coach Mike in the chat. You you can just put CM in the chat, man. Oh my goodness, man! That do y'all like that? Let's give a round of applause to him. Oh my goodness! Let's give him. Let's give him another round of applause. I just, I just, I said good grade, Coach Mike. Oh, are you guys used to this? This is new. This is brand spank new. You know, it, this is hey Jerry Jones saying. Uh, uh, I want me some glory hole. But 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 finish him. This is Sparta. If you don't like Mike McCarthy at this point, you must be out of your goddamn mind. I mean, come on, man. And if you ain't hitting that like button, like uh, money out of the, you know you what? You must be out of your goddamn mind. Y'all gotta hit that. Y'all gotta hit that like button, man. Share this content, sprinkle it all over the world and the globe, there, man. Oh my goodness! Shout out to one hundred five point three, the fan. Uh, let me check on these guys. Moving them, but I would say this: my feeling, my gut feeling, is the way that. The last six to eight years of free agency has gone that I think that they would move to another position if they did get a shortstop. They wouldn't stay in that market. Oh, they're talking baseball. All right, so baseball is cool and all, but it ain't nothing to compare to football. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find that interview with Jerry Wayne and things, man. And shout out to everybody who's jumping in on the breaking news. Uh, appreciate you guys, man. If you're on Facebook, if you are watching right now, let me know. Uh, I think I have a little issue with my Facebook, but but if you are on Twitter and Twitch, man, I appreciate you guys there. Uh, and they don't have that interview up yet, man. I'm gonna find that interview, bro. <laughs> they didn't upload it yet, 
Maybe it's on, maybe I can go to the Cowboys website. Let me go there, man. You know, shout out to Cowboys.com. Be sure to check them out. Always great stuff. Wonderful stuff. Shout out to Mickey Spags and every bead of information that those boys have over there. Uh, this would not be possible without uh, Jerry Jones and his and his ability, man, to market this thing and sell it to us like hotcakes, man. Uh, should should play better than Williams. Govers should play better than Williams. Let's look at that. You know, uh, Connor Williams, by the way, this is his by far, by far, his best season so far. And at his best season, he plays 660 snaps, right? That's a lot of snaps. Only allow one sack. One sack, you know, you know that 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 is remarkable, by the way. But what's the ugly booger that's sitting on the side of his mouth, and everybody trying to say, "Hey man, go like this, go like this, dog, go." Hey, hey. Connor, now nah, McGovern, you good? But Williams, go like this, dog. You got a big booger. Is this thirteen penalties? Number one, can you see that with your eyes, Cowboy Nation? It don't say number two. It don't say number three. Number one in the National Football League. Now, I do get it. Uh, For the Connor Williams apologist, I do get it, right? I'm not sitting here trying to beat you down. I'm not beating you up or anything. Some of those penalties come from the fact that he played for the Cowboys. But as as old folks say, you know, and I'm always quoting old folks because they they've been around this world for a long time for a reason, and and they live 80 and 90 years of age, and they be right on the money. Not everybody's lying. Write that down. Not everybody's lying. Overall, 70.9. This past year, pass blocking 73.4. Run blocking, 71.1. Hits allowed, zero. Big goose egg on that thing. Like I said, sack only allowed one sack out of 660 snaps. That ain't bad. Ten pressures out of 660 snaps, only ten pressures. That, collectively speaking, is not even bad, right? But we are we are not about participation trophies. We're not about find, trying to have a team to look good. We about war. We about fighting. We about making sure we better our best. So if the other person, your contemporary, if he's doing a better job than you, lo and behold, to make this thing fair and balanced, you're gone. You know, that's just how it goes, unfortunately. Unfortunately, you're not saved by your, you know, by, by your good plays. You know, your good deeds would not save you, right? All right, so this is only off of 152 snaps. And, of course, that is a whole lot different than the 660, right? It's not fair. It's not reasonable. It's not balanced or what have you. You want to go through that. All right, so overall, he's 85. That's only on the sample size and pass blocking. He needs to improve on that. This is Connor McGovern in 86. So we don't have to go through the nuances or or all of the other things to go through this. There are other things that stats can only say on one end because I tell people all the time, stats are okay, that's good, that's cool. But you got to also watch the tape. You got to also watch the film. I know for sure that I've seen people who graduated with 3.9, 3.8, 4.0 GPAs, right? And they're working at Walmart, Dollar General, you know. you know, And I'm, and there's nothing wrong with that, too, by the way. I'm not selling or denigrating them. But just because you graduated at the top of your class does not mean that you're going to get the resources and the money and things like that. It's the person that grinds, they get it out of the mud, right? Uh, Luke, me, appreciate you. <laughs> Shout out to you, man. Uh, two to four sacks with Chris Jones. This is from Look, Look Me. <laughs> Look Me? What, what, what the heck, man? Look Me. McGovern drops uh, his head and he leans every time. He has terrible feet. Well, I don't know who made you like the offensive line guru uh, or, 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 or do you have a content creation channel that, that everybody can go to? And, and, and do you have film assessment to go with your talk, uh, Luke, me? You know, because everybody can talk, right? But do you have any 
work that's been done? Do you have any presentations that you can go out in front of anybody and everybody and explain, okay, this is when he dropped his head. Oh, this is when his feet are slow. This is when he's not sliding in or this is not when he's been pulled to block. You know, since you are the expert, you know, I'm just saying, you know, when we call people out over here, you might go to somebody else's show and talk your noise, but we call you out over here, Luke. You know, <laughs> you cap it. You know what I'm saying? Because now what you said, collectively speaking, that you know more than Joe Philbin. Oh, and collectively speaking, that you know more than Mike McCarthy, John Stephen Jones, right? That, that you've been over here creating content and you've been spitting your mind talking about these are his flaws. These are his issues. This is his tape. This is where I can break it down. This is where his post leg is just slow. Oh, he don't have a kick slide even when he's on the out. He, you, do, do you do that, Luke? You know, you know, it, you know. Look, the extent of your football knowledge is whatever the announcer says on the game, Luke. Come down to Dallas, and I can show you one. You know what I'm saying? I got people that literally listen to my channel that's playing in the National Football League. On top of that, I got Cedric Wilson, who had a hell of a game multiple times this year. And guess who? Been right beside him during the offseason. Just because I'm not out here, just because I'm not out here capping, you know what I'm saying? I got, look, I tell people all the time, validation is only good for parking. But people like Luke, who probably never played the game, don't understand that, hey, when we talk this stuff, we mean it. This is me speaking this stuff for real. That's just what it is. Donovan Wilson, guess who? He talked to. Oh, Law Nation. Do I go around here, walk my chest out, and say, hey, man, Donovan Wilson, man. Hey, I work with Donovan Wilson. No, I don't do that. But I guarantee you, you can pick up the phone. If you're from the DF Dub, you can call Coach Bird right now. I guarantee you Coach Bird would say, hey, dog, this Law Nation is the truth over here. You know, I don't need. <laughs> so with all of that being said, Cowboy Nation, for those who think that they, they think that that helmet is just for show back there in the back, why don't you just lean forward just a little bit? You know, before he leave for it. You must be out of your goddamn mind. <laughs> Talking about my football outcome is only because of what the what the announcer says. When I got people with the blue check mark that's checking in on me to get some content and material. Yeah, so so why don't you lean forward a little bit? <laughs> And that's why, you know, that's another thing that I like to bring forth. You know what I'm saying to everybody. That's why when I do live conversations and I even do call-ins and even the people that's my contemporaries, when have you ever seen them even come at me like that as far as my football outcome or knowledge? Hmm? Don't often do it. They know it. You know what I'm saying? They know for sure. You know what I'm saying? That they, they look, Law, he talk, he talk, but he mean it, though. You know what I'm saying? And he back it up with physical evidence. I'm the first one to go out here and do these type of things. I don't have to lie to kick it. That's the reality of it. The people, some of the people that you guys praise are the same people that come back to me for the information. Huh? Oh, I tell you the truth, man. Uh, let, let me get off. Let me get off. As old folks say, let me get off of my high horse. You know, what I'm saying? they think that all of this stuff that I got over here is because of me it was free. You no, know, I grind to get everything that you guys say. You know, it, it, but validation is only good for parking. <laughs> it's only good for parking. It's only good for parking. Let me see if they posted this information. They still haven't posted the information, but let me go right here. Y'all bear with me. Y'all bear with me. Possible to get 100% of people to do anything ever. Breathe. Okay. Well, that they have a choice. And I, well, I guess you have a choice. I don't want to take this in a darker path. So we're just going to leave it there and say, good job, Mike. What are you even talking about? 
<laughs> ride, Scotty said, ride that high horse. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. It, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. It, it is flat out crazy. Oh, law. And y'all know, two weeks ago, we had an event at Dak Prescott Restaurant Walk-Ons, right? Oh, Duke Mannyweather was there. He's the O-line guru who had the conversation for the nation with Duke. Now, I ain't no TMZ law. I don't have the camera while I'm talking. You know, that that, that that's fanboy stuff. You know, I'm too, you know, I'm for, for one, you know, I'm too classy to have a dang on, you know, walking in front of a five-star restaurant because it was right across the street from the walk-on. Walk-on is good, but it ain't five-star, but it's good, though. But, you know, good food. It would look like me pulling out a selfie stick saying, hey, Duke, you know, what about this? I don't have to get that on, on whack because when you're doing things good, people recognize you before you recognize them. You know what I'm saying? Pull me to the side and say, hey, man, I'm not comfortable with Terrence Steele playing left tackle. You know what I'm saying? And I could have went off with the information then. But law is not that dude. Come on, Cowboy Nation. I ain't that dude. And he told me some more stuff, but I ain't finna just spill all of for everything. But if you think otherwise, 657-390-7391 is the highlight for your mom. You go ahead, call in. You know, let me know what's on your mental. You know, that's what you I want to know. the only participant in the conference. Well, I got about 30, about 30 or so minutes or so, you know. All participants are muted. That's the hotline for your mind. Call in. Call my phone, hit my line. Only ones who down for real, down for line. Keep it super thumb my way on this side. Keep it super thumb my way on this side. Call my phone, hit my line. Only ones who down for real, down for line. Only the ones that down, baby. Come on, call it, look. <laughs> Lou, I am your father. <laughs> Nine five six, you in the mix? Law Cowboys Nation. None to it. What's good? Getting ready to be entertained. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you're not entertained. Is this not why you're here? <laughs> Talk to me, man. We said we said after a 40-point win, there were issues that we needed to address. One of them was Connor Williams. Mm -hmm. The staff paid attention. They saw that, hey, I don't know. What did McCarthy say? Technique? I don't know what technique you have when you're getting blown up and bull rushed into the quarterback, there ain't much technique you can do about that. Not but that they much. said, we don't want to be the NFC East champ. We want to make a run at the one and two seed and be in that NFC championship game at least. And they realized, see, Will, we know you have been our most reliable O-line the last two, two and a half years in terms of games played. But... We need to light a fire. Mm -hmm. We need to see better. We have Connor McGovern. I think it was just uh, as uh, there's a there's a YouTube channel called Rika Moving the Chains. And right, right. Mike Crum from Cowboys Wire. I think he put it best. He said his sources said if Connor McGovern was able to move on the left side as well as he was able to move on the right side. This switch would have made would have been made earlier. Mm. I can see that because offensive line, it's not like hey, you can play the right, you so you can play the left. No, that doesn't work in the O line. You have to get used to it. You have to be able to do different things. As the O line guru there, Duke Bainweather said. So McCarthy, who has stressed, if you play the same five O linemen. Analytics will tell you you're probably going to win a lot of games. Even he had to be convinced that let's do a change at Connor Williams. Let's see if that will help us with Biedish, who has been playing better. Right, right. So I like it. I like it. They sent that the team a message with Jalen Smith, not only our, our player, but Jared's business partner. Right. They sent the team a message. They're sending another one. 
We're not settling for NFC East championships anymore. We want Lombardis, and this is how we shake it up and we send a message. What a hell of a game to do it. So, Cowboys Nation, get ready. We are going to get the ball first against Kansas City because if we win the coin flip again, McCarthy's going to say your defense is not going to stop our offense. Right. We're going to score. Right. If Kansas City wins, they're going to defer because that's what they do. Mm. Man, you so spin the truth, ready. man. We're going to score first. Their defense cannot stop our run, and Dak and our wide receivers is going to shred their pass defense. So, Cowboys Nation, don't fret. Yes, it's Kansas City at Kansas City, but we went toe-to-toe with the Super Bowl champions. We're going to knock out the team that they beat in the Super Bowl, and we're going to do another <laughs> statement win Sunday afternoon because oh, no. we got Dak and our team is is motivated. McCarthy saying NFC East is not good enough. Not anymore. Mm, so we have you. our offense, and Kansas City has their defense. That's why Dallas 38, Kansas City 24. Because Dak and this team will show out. Enjoy it, Cowboys Nation. Enjoy it. And tell them haters. Puro pinche cowboys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. That's the loader tick. <laughs> baby, baby. <laughs> Good call from here, man. Now, now, hey, Cowboy Nation. Let the first caller get on here and you know they, they spit their mind for for, for whatever lot of time that they got. Now, everybody else, man, we're going to have to slow the, the time clock down because I got I to gotta roll. But I got the 713. You're live. You're live. What's going on, Love Nation? Man, nothing to it, man. Talk to me. Hey, what's going on, man? There's no one from uh, uh, Houston, Texas, man. And uh, first of all, it's going to do what everybody always does. If they give reference to first call, say that you, you're doing your thing, keep it up and keep going. Uh, I'm just my part that I'm gonna to touch on, man, is this the feel of the team. I'm not gonna talk about what everybody else talks about. Just say the feel of the, the team. The feel. And watching these sounds from the sideline has been sick. <sighs> it has been. If, if you don't have chills from everybody talking from the sideline, from from boss man talking, he don't even play that much. Just right. That he's been talking, and then the last one that I see right now that just solidified it. They showed Dak Prescott sound from the sideline, and he was saying, uh, "I think they were, they forgot I'm a big motherfucker. I had to <laughs> right. I had to remind them that I'm a big that. First of all, if anybody's a true Cowboys fan and you was watching that play, you held your breath <clears> and you said, well, <gasps> whoa, Dak, what you doing? But that's Dak. That's Dak. The team is different.'" This team is different, right? But Dak is different from the difference, mm-hmm. and that's what we just got. And I, I just love seeing it. I'm going to get off the line. I love seeing it, but Dak is a different kind of different. And I really think before I close off, I'm gonna say this. This is the reason why I think he is. This man has gone through what nobody would ever wish upon their worst enemy within the past ten years of his life. Right. And I think that that sets him up to where there's nothing that can happen in the NFL that is going to affect them. So I'm going to no get doubt. off, man, and I just think that, man, I, I just love what I'm seeing. Keep doing what you're doing, man. We love you from the youth from the H-Town, and just go Cowboys. Bro. No doubt, man. H-Town, get down, man. Appreciate you, man. From 713, man. I mean, he's spitting the truth over here, and – Quarterbacks, football is football. If, the moment, and, and look, this is a true testament to just life in general. The moment you pull back, the moment you hesitate, the moment you lack up, the moment that you give back, that's the moment that everything else creep in. You got to keep that momentum going. I recall, and I know this was the Super Bowl, I believe, or was it the Super Bowl when John Elway stretched out D and jumped into the <laughs> end zone, spent around like a <laughs> – like a, a helicopter, you know what I'm saying? Propeller. And he was just spinning around. But he wanted it more than that opposition. He was looking at it like this is a chance, this is an opportunity for me to not fall back, for me not to get back, for me to take it on. 
And that is what Dak Prescott exhibits and exude too. And I'm quite sure when he says leave it all on the field, he mean it. He's not playing around with it. Seven eight five, you live. Hey, what's going on, Law Nation? It's your boy Jay Tuck, man. What's going on? Oh, Jay Tuck, what's good, man? Oh my goodness, my dog, yeah. man. What's good, man? Let me say, let me save your name in here, man. <laughs> yeah, man. So I'll let everybody know, Cowboys Nation. I'm calling from the belly of the beast. I'm here in Kansas City. I'm going to be out there and. I picked up my family last night at midnight at the airport Ooh. and to see a blue coming in. So Cowboys Nation is going to be out here at Arrowhead, and we're going to be ready to turn up, man. So we all excited about this game, and we're going to make a statement on Sunday. Mm. So I want to ask you this question real quick, Law. Talk you know, to we you. saw what we kind of did last week versus Pitts, right? We kind mm-hmm. of utilized uh, Jordan Lewis on Pitts. I want to get your thoughts. How do you think that the Cowboys are going to try to neutralize Travis Kelsey? Because Travis Kelsey, to be honest with you, He's the engine that runs the, the, the Chiefs' offense, right? Right. And so I know that a lot of people have been playing like a lot, a lot of cover two, and it's making them play underneath. But with Kelsey, he has a lot of yak where he can get those underneath plays and make something happen. So do you think we're going to go with a similar game plan and utilize Jordan Lewis, or do we think we're going to see a combination of J. Ron Curse and a variety of different schemes to kind of bracket uh, Travis Kelsey. All right. So first and foremost, man, that, that's a beautiful assessment there. Uh, but but we got we got to say this. Um, I think that the caliber of quarterback is different between uh, Ryan Matt Ryan than than, um, than than my guy Pat Mahomes. Right. We we both agree with that. Right. right. Matt, Matt Ryan when he rolls out, there's a possibility for the underneath guy to make sure that he can creep down inside because he's afraid that he can run. So he gets off of his guy to tight end. So that play, that could have changed the whole outcome of the game. The other thing that we have to realize, Travis Kelsey forgot more football than Kyle Pitts know. Do you agree? Right. <laughs> so, well, but, yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> so finding the soft spots and, and understanding playing with leverage with a guy that's shorter than him. I mean, he's going to eat Jordan Lewis alive if they keep that type of if they keep that type of matchup. I'm just being real with everyone. I'm not finna sit here and kick it and say, well, hey, you know, Jordan Lewis, he can probably play underneath on uh, Travis Kelsey all game. But if we do play two right. safety deep, the middle of the field, the hook routes, that's going to be easy and accessible and also the flats. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to still give them two deep safety look, but we got to disguise it. We got to because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if we can bracket cover Tyreek Hill, right, mm-hmm. and if we can figure out a way to put some physicality on, on Kelsey, Maybe that will be your guy. I think that that his nickname is uh, is uh, J Rock, J Ron Curse. I think they call him J Rock. If right, you right. if you can if, if you if you can if you can redirect, bump, get into the face with him, and then have somebody else to slide over the top, that would be our uh, secret antidote there. There we go. There we go. Hey, Cowboys Nation, no time to get be afraid. We coming to Kansas City about to take over, man. Do you do score prediction, bro? Bro, do you do score prediction? Yeah, I, I, got, I got a score prediction, man. I, I think it's going to be a lot low scoring than a lot of people are wanting uh, because I feel like the Cowboys are actually going to punch the Chiefs in the mouth and run the ball. Um, so I got the Cowboys winning, at this point, 28-27. to 27. Now, I'll tell you all, if I get out there at this tailgate and these Chiefs fans are hooping and hollering, I'm going to ask for another 40-burger. You know what I'm saying? So, but I feel like it's, a, it's just going to be a close game. Uh, you know, I don't think it's going to be in the 40s like everyone is kind of expecting. I think it's going to be a little bit closer. Um, but I think the Cowboys are going to come out and actually run the ball, and we have the capability to do so. So it's going to be more of a balanced approach. Uh, but it's going to be a good game both ways. This is what everybody's been waiting on to see. Yeah, man, we're waiting on to see it. I think that the Cowboys are uh, going to still score north of 20 points uh, just just based upon – and just hear me out, Jay, Jay Tuck. Hear me right. out. Just based upon they are the 27-ranked defense, right? They also right. they are also uh, on defense in the red zone. The, uh, the Chiefs are ranked 26. So right. although our red zone offense is not the best in the NFL, but I'm just looking at the law of averages. And uh, I just yeah. look at it like with the fourth-ranked passing offense and the fourth-ranked rushing offense, 
that's too much for the uh, Kansas City Chiefs to just push us down to that to that to that mark right. of us not hitting our goal. But the Denver Broncos, mm-hmm. the reason why they were able to do all of those things against us, because of course, yeah, we had some uh, some injured guys. But their running approach was just so remarkable in T.O.P. time of possession. That that just right. what really got them to that point. But I believe if the Cowboys were to able to have at least 25 to 30 minutes of time of possession against the Denver Broncos, we would have scored a little bit more. But I appreciate right. you on the assessments, right. though. Yeah. yeah, and also the Chiefs like to blitz a lot. They like to play a lot of man. So it's going to be opportunities. And so yeah. I always say it's like, you know, Bird King, you can have it your way. I feel like Kellen Moore is going to have it his way versus Chiefs defense. So, like I said, we ready, but we're going to win this game. We're going to make a statement across the NFL. Uh, no doubt, man. Appreciate you for calling in, Jay Tuck. Hey, tell everybody, man, where they can find and follow your content. Yeah, yeah. You can follow me on, on Cowboys Fans Only. It's my YouTube channel. Also on Twitter, at JayTuck151. I appreciate all the support, Cowboys Nation. And like I said, we ready, and we're going to be ready for Sunday. No doubt, man. Appreciate you, Jay Tuck, man. Hey, hey, and let him go all the way over because, man, hey, hey, that's one of my dogs, one of the guys that's a content creator. He's just not out here just fit of faddling with his thumb. And I'm not talking about the people that's not content creators, by the way. But what I'm saying is that, hey, man, this dude, man, he getting it out of the mud over here, baby. Uh, let me see who was really next. I think this is from the 601 and from my neck of the woods, man. You live. Hey, what's going on, Law Nation? Nothing uh, to it, man. Kobe, man, from uh, Mississippi. What, what part, man? What part from Mississippi, bro? Uh, Laura, Mississippi. Laura, Laura, Miss. Oh, you from all corner down that way, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Big kind of law. Big kind of law. Yeah, yeah, man. What's good, man? Oh, no, Laura. Uh, uh, do you think our line can be uh, more balanced if we put uh, go with uh, the left guard and uh, Zach Martin stay at right guard and put Steve back at left tackle and put Colin at uh, left guard, would they be more bounce run attack and we can get our, you know, handle our run game a lot better? I mean, we, we, we talked about this before, and I was with the belief of uh, of this right here, uh, um, fam, is that best five, start your best five. And whatever right. the coaching says who they believe that they're their best five then we'll roll with that you know but wholesale changes i think that they not going to do wholesale changes and one thing that i did when i looked across the board there was only two weak spots that we had from a statistical aspect of it and that was uh, uh connor williams and tyler biotis right so right, right. i believe that they looking at Tyler Biotis as, hey, last year he started what around week six, week seven. He didn't have a full year, and then he had the hamstring situation. So technically, if you want to get technical with it, this is his rookie year, basically, right? Right. right. So, so they looking at it like, man, we still see some improvement. We can grow with him. He's developing. He's picking up. Now, as far as Connor Williams, I mean, how many years he been here? Yeah, three, 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 four years. So they looking at it like, man, right. he, he didn't already reached his ceiling. Now, although what he's doing is good, but we're looking for great. So we're going to insert the guy that been making some movements here, and that's Connor McGovern. Now, in preseason, Connor McGovern didn't have that good of a showcasing. You know, right, he, he, right. he didn't he didn't have a good showcasing in preseason. Why, Law? Why? Because he was playing right tackle. He was playing right guard. He was he been kicked in at left guard. He was kicked in at center. So he had a lot of things. Uh, old folks say, man, concentrate on one thing. Don't try to concentrate on multiple things and see what you're good at. And then just continue to do what you're good at. Don't try to do everything. Okay, now I sure appreciate your time, Law man. I watch and listen to your show every day, man, and I follow you and I try to keep in touch with all of my guys in law and let them know to watch your show. So, man, I love it, man. I love what you got. You get big things you got going, Doc. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you for calling in. Laurel, Laurel is more so over there by, I think it's by Hattiesburg, right? Is it by Hattiesburg? I got off a little bit on that one. All right, but neither, you know, there. I got the 202. What's new? 202, you live. Uh, 
Hey, what's going on, man? Bro? Talk. Boy in the well, calling out the DMV, man. DMV in the house, baby. What you got for this episode, man? Yeah, man. I just, just want to let you know, DC definitely stand for Dallas Cowboys out yeah. here. So yeah, we definitely mobbing with the nation. But um, as far as this week, though, I'm gonna keep it short. We just gotta contain Mahomes, man. Keep him in the pocket, but we gotta bliss him. <clears throat> gotta mm-hmm. bliss him. Got to. Send Jordan Lewis and Anthony Brown. You know, send the corners at him, and then you know how he like to step up in the pocket and run all the way up. I feel like Michael Parson would do a good job standing in the middle. I feel like this game put him at middle linebacker, let him spy, and just stay on him. Now, hey man, let me tell you this, man. Uh, if you look at the last game plan they played against the Raiders, who pretty much gave them everything underneath, and uh, the only way you can really stop, stop and slow that down, fam, would be having a dynamic dynamic linebacker who can chase the flats and then on occasions depending on the down and out distance blitz them through the uh, a or b gap and that should be our game plan if we giving them the underneath and if pat mahomes because they were saying that he was so patient last game but raiders good no but they don't have they don't have a, a michael parsons i think the other guy was injured uh so they don't have yeah they don't have parsons right right and then I feel like, you know, that we have the dynamic defense. You have Keanu Neal. You have, Par- I mean, Parsons out there. We're going to stop that. You know, they like to do a lot of short stuff. And they two leading receivers where they tight end and they running back. Right, tight right. Tight end and running back. Tight so end and running back. I feel like, you know, we're going to switch it up with uh, tight end coverage. But we're going to have to put a double. I remember earlier you were saying that we're going to have to put like a double team over there. Blanket coverage with Tyreek Hill. We got to. You got to. You, you can't. Look. You got to. Tyreek you you, you can't. Yeah. Oh, my God, man. Hey, hey, people think that, okay, you can play the underneath and, and keep the over the top free. No, you can't. Because any that ball. Be sweet money, bro. Yeah. Please yeah. Oh, my gosh. 20 passes behind the line mm. of scrimmage for us. Please do that. Yeah. Just do yeah. us a huge favor and do that. Yeah, appreciate you, you so much, man. Corners, man. Appreciate you, man, from right, the from man. the DC. Man, appreciate you. Salute. Right. Good call from him, man. The conference has been locked. Got uh, Glenn Law. You you live, Glenn Law. Hey, hey, what's good, <laughs> Law? Good to touch base with you again. So you got you got two DC area calls in a row. So uh, mm-hmm. DC is definitely for Dallas Cowboys, and you know it. Right. Hey, hey. Uh, so I want to just quickly. Uh, touch base on this. Um, I don't know about you, but like when the Cowboys, when the game is over and then we watch either the Sunday night game or the, or the Monday night game, we're able right. to kind of scout other teams in the NFL and just kind of pick their, you know, pick their brains a little bit just by watching and, and matching what we did compared to uh, what other teams are doing. I say this to say, because I have to have a new appreciation for Mike McCarthy. Because oh my God. I was watching yeah. I was watching uh, the Rams and Sean McVay, and, you know, some of that shine that was on him a little bit has come off for me. And, and this is what I mean. I think the Cowboys, I think we kind of under, under, some of us kind of underrate Mike McCarthy a bit. We kind of look at him, we kind of compare him to Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore is kind of the new shiny toy, and, and I can't take nothing away from him, but he's not perfect. Right. And what I mean by that is, I don't think he had a great game uh, against the Broncos. And I know it's easy to say, but I think his play calling was a little bit off. I felt like he was a little impatient. Mm -hmm. And so I look at the dynamics between McCarthy and Kellen Moore. Yes, Kellen Moore, he's got talent, but he's not perfect. I think we kind of get the benefit of Mike McCarthy because, number one, he's been a play caller. Number two, he's very experienced with West Coast concepts because he was on the coaching staff with the Kansas City Chiefs. When Joe Montana came over, they changed the yeah. whole offense. And right. he was on staff there. So this idea that McCarthy is just, you know, some job of the hut sitting on the side waiting for Kellen Moore to get that's just not happening. They're bouncing ideas and concepts off of each other all week. And so my point is that we can't look we can't look at that and um, and underestimate that because whether Kellen Moore is here next year or not, I think ultimately we're gonna have another play caller who comes in who's going to be very knowledgeable, and they're going to be able to still bounce concepts off each other. So McCarthy, I think he knows a lot more than we think he does. And I think coming up this weekend, I, I agree with the la- one of the last callers, we have got to reestablish the running game. Right, we so got to. My question for you is... Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, go, yeah, I was go ahead. Say, my, my, 
my, my question for you is, this running game's kind of been off track just a little bit. I know we, we you know, our right. passing game got back on track last week, but I think in order for us to win this weekend, I think we got to reestablish that. My question is, what, what's, what's been slowing us down? Well, 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 first and foremost, as a collective, we, 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 we're fourth rank in Russian, and I know this is a collective body because what we tend to look at is that the last game, I think Ezekiel Elliott rushed for like 40, and uh, Tony Pollard, he rushed for like 40-some yards as well. And then there was a big holding call, too, that, that knocked off another 25 to 30 yards off of that run. So I think that they collectively – can get to uh, averaging 100 yards a game. But uh, I, I just I just feel like if the Cowboys are rolling with the flow, and I'm, I know that they are more pass happy. I know that Keller Moore tends to call more passing plays juxtaposed to running plays. But you got to do what's comfortable for you. And if it's not broken, don't fix it. So let's not run for the sake of running, but let's let's play our style of football. And if we got favorable matchups, they they trust Rain Dakota Prescott to audible out to make the necessary adjustments and to take take care of what the defense is trying to take away and 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 exploit them. And we can't leave out. I see somebody made a brilliant point. We can't leave out Ben McAdoo. All of those game plans and those game setups count. A lot, not 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 a little, but a lot. So, uh, in order for us to get back to the running situation, like you mentioned, we just got to do it. And I think that if, and that's probably be one of the plans of reason why they got Connor McGovern in there because he's better. He's better as it relates to uh, run run blocking. You see, his run blocking is eighty six, and I know this is only a sample size. Uh, and and the uh, running block for uh, Connor Williams is at seventy one. Now the other argument was uh, okay, what to do with um, Lyle Collins? I think that Lyle Collins. Let me pull up his, his stats. I looked at it earlier. I think it's well off into the high eighties or the high nineties as it relates to run. So yeah, ninety three. That's like. Whew. That's like uh, way up there, bro. So now you're going to get more and more run. Now now you can showcase more of a run situation. And I've seen the Cowboys before pull, pull at the right tackle in certain run formations. So so they're going to fix that up. It's going to get better. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you. Uh, I'll let you go. But I'll, I'll say this one last thing on, on the Connor Williams thing. I think part of it, too. If you start to get a reputation around the league, fair or unfair, I think some of the calls were a little iffy. But right, I think right. some of these refs or some of these coaches on opposing teams were coming to these refs before the game saying, hey, watch Connor Williams. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. And so even when you have a borderline hold, they're looking for it, and they're going to pull the flag. So I think reputation played a little bit of a role into it too. Right. But I think it's the right decision. We can't have that all year long. It's like a toothache. You can't just leave it there. So right, right. I'll let you go on that. Appreciate you, and, man. Uh, appreciate you. Love the show. Thank you, Glenn Law. He's delivering the law over there. Uh, uh, Cowboy Nation, also keep in mind, uh, just, just like when Shaq was playing basketball, for crying out loud, there were some calls that he just don't get because of the of, of situation. He was just a big boy. They would file him and file him. They wouldn't even call it on him, you know, because they expect that that he would not, you know, you know, he could still continue to play, and they just didn't want to call a file every single time. And that was the inverse effect to everything. All right, so we got the uh, 406 live. Hop up. Oh, hop up them cowboys, man. All day, baby. Uh, I'm here in the deep in the mountains here in Montana. Um, I'm from Texas. But uh, I just want to say that I remember the, the first season um, of that Prescott season went to the playoffs and that energy against the Packers, remember? And then uh, that came with the last drive. Uh, well, not the last drive. <laughs> we were hoping it was the last right, drive. Right, 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 uh, right. He goes for the touchdown and then the, the two-point conversion. And then I, I, I run outside my apartment and I'm yelling in El Paso, Texas, right? But mm. then Aaron Rodgers comes and he does his thing and our defense couldn't do a damn thing. Right. And then that one season when the Rams went to the Super Bowl, uh, and uh, and um, when we were playing against the Rams in the playoffs, mm -hmm. and we got beat, man. The only one who was balling was was Dak Prescott, man. And and um, I have to say a little bit of coup, right? But the right. Defense, now, it, it was, was Michael Gallup in that game. He caught those two yeah, big Gallup, passes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
and 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 our, our our defense was getting punched in the mouth, you know. But but this is the thing. This season, I feel the energy of this season in this game, um, like we did in the Packers. But it's not the same team. You feel me? It, it, we don't have young Dak anymore. We don't have mm-hmm. a young. We have a leaders. We have soldiers on both sides, and we have soldiers on the defense who are strapped up, man. They're gonna punch Casey in the mouth all damn day. And, and Casey's going to be afraid to run the ball. They're going to have to run the ball because there's going to be some picks. There's going to be some picks. And, and I feel there has to be a, a speedster out there that will have a QB spy on Pat Mahomes. Because you know if, if we go in the outside, contain in the outside, Pat will find the hole in the middle, right? right. And then all the defensive backs, um, their helmets will be um, – the back will be facing uh, Pat, and Pat will just take off. But we have that QB spy, man. Then, then I think we'll be set. You know, we we we're gonna bully the linemen, we're gonna bully the defense, and and we're gonna suffocate them. We're gonna take them to the deep end of the ocean and drown them, and they're not gonna know what to do. Uh, but shout out law. Uh, I've been several years been part of the Law Nation University, trying to get my law degree at your yeah. university, <laughs> man. And I appreciate you, big dog. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> I love those energies, man, right there. It was a good call from him. I got to bounce like a basketball. But, you know, you know, when, you, when you're bringing out all of that, you know, you, know, you bring out the... <laughs> good call from him, man. What if I told you? You know, it, that's just how it goes, Cowboy Nation. Uh, I don't really. I've seen some people say, uh, Law, why you block people? I got I got a team of mods, and I trust their thoughts on who to block and who not to block. So shout out to my mods, man. Uh, if they block somebody, I mean, you, you can send me an email at lawsnation. At, at lawsnation at gmail.com. You know, send me an email. You state your name, your reasoning, your person, you know, and then I can go in and uh, I can unblock you or what have you if you have a valid point. But outside of that, Cowboy Nation, uh, if you feel free to call in, you know, you call in, state your case. And, and you know, that's that's another way you can call the six, five, seven, three, nine, oh, seven, three, nine, one number and you can state your case there. Uh, but I, I, I law nation only block only a few people. Since I've been doing this, and I don't have no reason to to run away, skirt, and hide from anybody. I'm a man before anything, and no person, no man on this planet, I fear. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, I fear no one. And uh, when I talk, I talk for real. You know, this is the same me here, the same me that you guys see at the Cowboys Experience. That you guys can go there as well and speak to me live, face to face. And that's just what it is. I'm in Dallas. So if y'all, you know, if y'all want to keep that energy, come to Dallas. Talk. Let's talk. Let's have this conversation. But nine times out of ten, y'all not. You know what I'm saying? It's just keyboard warriors. But at the end of the day, uh, Cowboy Nation, let's stay focused. Let's stay on the grind. Let's stay and keep everything 100. And that's just how it goes. Yeah, you know, definitely. You know, only fair God. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Why would we fair man, you know? But I come here to tell you guys, at the end of the day, certain situations and opportunities are always here, even for the keyboard warriors to state their claim. Now, there's rules and regulations and there's codes to laws over here. You know what I'm saying? In order for you to operate in this dimension. And if you don't feel into that code, then you get cast out. If you don't feel in to those reasonings, you get slapped. You get pushed out. You get purged, actually. You know. But this Dallas Cowboys team, they've been into this same situation for many of years. Shout out to you, Sally Lawyer. Appreciate you so much. Oh, my goodness. I, I love it when I see some, some real ones in the chat. I really appreciate you, Sally Lawyer. So, with that being said, Cowboy Nation, how bad do you want this? How bad do you need this? Well, the opportunity is here. You fight, you claw. You bring forth every great thing that you can find. And you lay it on the table. But Law, what about the injuries? You lay it on the table. Law, what about Ashaniqua? 
Pookie and Ray Ray, they just passed away. You lay it on the table. Let the dead bury the dead. That's what one great leader said, right? This is about this opportunity. How bad do you want to be with this situation? You mean I got to sell everything to get here? Yes. That's the toll way. That's the price you got to pay if you want to. Get it. Let me know where I'm lying. If you want a thing bad enough to go out there and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time and your peace and your sleep for it, if all of your desires of it makes you quite mad enough that you don't get tired of it and it makes you hold all other things taut, self seems empty and useless without it and all that we scheme and dream is about it if you'll gladly go out there and sweat for it, fret for it, and plan for it and lose all terror of God or man for it if you will simply. Oh, just simply go after the thing you want with all of your capacity, strength and scargacity, with faith, hope, and confidence, and stern pertinacity. If neither cold, poverty, or famine, or fame, or sickness, or body, or brain can turn you away from the thing you want, if dogged and grim, and proceed and beset it with the help of almighty cowboy nation and beyond, like Conor McGovern, you will get it. It's been my time. I really thank you all for yours. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the best. Let's go, Cowboy Nation. We getting up out of here, baby! Let's go. Send me back around. Send me the back around. What we tell him, baby? Tell him run it, tell him run it up, baby. Hey, yeah. Yeah. I wake up. Flex. Thumb down that. Check. No drip. This. Wet. Tell him run it up. Tell him run up. it up. Roll Rest credits, baby. Nobody can do this. Cowboys experience. Cowboy Nation. We are the best. Everybody else is in second place. Y'all looking up to the greatness. Let's continue to grind and shine. We got the best fan base on the planet, on the map. Let me know where I'm lying, baby. Other fan base and organizations try, but they still looking up. They wish they have a community like us. On top of that, we so good, Cowboy Nation. We so good that other fan bases are here watching. Put in my hours, send an invoice, and they pay me. I need six rings like MJ and Tom Brady. I wake up, flex, thumb down that check. No drip, this. Tell them run it up. No sleep, no rest. Might crash, might wreck. But first, I stretch. Tell them run it up. I wake up, flex, thumb down that check. No drip, this. Tell them run it up. No sleep, no rest. Might crash, might wreck. But first I stretch. Tell them run it Y'all up. Y'all gon' make me take that trip way out to Europe. I call up Niger here, come through in a hurry. Those London boys don't come to play, you should get worried. One false move, find yourself they getting buried. That's what the devil used to love playing those games. Made some bad decisions that brought my mama pain. I made a promise to her, swore that I would change. I'm on the come up, bet I live up to my name. I wake up, flex, thumb down that check. No drip, this. Tell them run it up. 